So thank you all for coming. Uh, it's my first hardwired experience, so I hope I speak uh, somewhat to what the conference is or the talk is about. Um, I'm the CEO of a company called Air Robo. Um, we are a drone operator, so we're a service company. We build and we operate drones. Um, mostly, my background, I went to NYU Film School. Uh, I produced movies and TV shows, uh, commercials for a number of years uh, before. You know, I was, I've always been very interested in the art side of things. Uh, I love a good Woody Allen movie, but I also really love uh, a flying robot that could film a movie. So, you know, three years ago when I saw a drone, realized you could put a camera on it, I was kind of blown away by what that would do to uh, enhance storytelling and enhance a lot of other, uh, obviously a, lo a lot of other industries. Um, so right now we're servicing in the media space. We're doing a lot of TV shows, commercials, movies. Um, and I want to show you... Uh, a film we just did that might be kind of a little interesting, cool thing for us to watch, uh, Chromaticity. We shot this a uh, couple months ago and uh, it just, uh, just hit the web. Okay, so now I'm actually going to show, I think when, uh, initially when I showed this to people, um, they were a little confused as to what they, what they were watching. Uh, so the BTS, um, the, second, the second clip uh, kind of will, uh, it's pretty short, but it kind of shows you uh, how complicated it really was. And I think the kind of the thesis I wanted to walk away with just from watching this is that um, in what we're doing, the operation of drones, uh, is actually incredibly challenging. And you'll see that uh, this was actually, if you want to play it, was actually uh, four drones flying at once. Uh, so we're out here on the Jersey Shore, four drones in the air, some DJI Phantoms, very complicated in-air acrobatics, orchestration, and choreography. <laughs>
funky, y'all. Okay. Okay, great. So uh, I, I really wanted to show that because, I mean, I know that there is obviously, I mean, is anybody in here involved in drones in any way? And I mean, you want to just shout out real quick, uh, like, what, what are you guys doing? Like, what's, what's, what part of the business are you in? Yeah. It's in your apartment. All right. Fair, fair enough. Is anybody anybody developing anything in the drone space? Yeah. Autonomous follows you around. Sure, sure. So my my company kind of specializes in in operations and pulling it off. And there there are many different aspects of drone operations, but actually being in the field, like we're doing a, as far as I know, we're doing more live news in the country, uh, and and actually being in the cold rain, uh, trying. To Pull off a real operation with a drone. Like this, 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 this was an extreme example. That was the point. Um, but actually, being able to pull it off and make it work, and make the client uh, feel like they have usable data, uh, and make it be efficient. Because there are other choices than drones, but we have to make it kind of accessible and usable for them. Um, and in terms of the hardware aspect, uh, what my company is doing is we're actually, you know, we looked at all the products, and of course, um, there is, a, you know. There is a DJ, DJI has a remarkable product. Everybody knows the Phantom very well. But my, I guess my advice really, if, you're, if you are designed to build something, we have a system we just released at South by Southwest called the Aerobo Mini. Um, and what, what the Aerobo Mini is designed to do is essentially be an incredibly lightweight, safe to fly over people, parachutes, um, and it also has an incredibly robust video downlink system. The thing that all the news networks want to do, the thing that's very sexy to them, is they want to go from the drone to a receiver to the truck and then broadcast it to 10 million people. Uh, and right now they can't really do that because the radio frequency trans transmission is not so good. Uh, you know, the American Broadcasting Company cannot have a couple of moments of black go across their airwaves. Uh, so this is kind of a, a, a market that I noticed was not being catered to, so we built a very lightweight system that has a $30,000, $40,000 uh, wireless video transmitter in it. Uh, and what, what I recommend, and the way we kind of came to that conclusion is, we simply ask the networks. Um, I think it's incredibly important that whenever you begin to embark on building any sort of hardware, it's gonna be way more, way more difficult than you think. Uh, and also get the feedback of the customer sooner than later. Uh, something like a Phantom records in 60 FPS. The networks don't want 60 FPS, they want 59.94. They want broadcast quality. Uh, now what is the difference between 60 and 59.94? Uh, the answer is not much, but all their other systems abide by 59.94. So whether or not it matters is kind of a moot point. The point is, is what they're accustomed to when they want only what they want. Uh, so thus, we made our system to be broadcast spec with their, they, they pretty much told me, all the networks told me, we want this camera and this transmitter. And I went, okay, great, I'll build that. It's simplest thing in the world. Um, so that is, that is this, sorry. The video's not done, but you'll, you'll get it. We looked into the market for professional news acquisition with drones. There really wasn't anything there. Uh, these drones had terrible video quality, signal would drop out on set, and half the time you couldn't even connect to the satellite truck. We set out to create a professional broadcasting tool to change the news world. This system gives us the ability to show stories at home like never before. When we set out to build the Aerobo Mini, we were most interested in safety, to fly it over people, and a robust wireless video transmission system. There is nothing else like this product on the market today. No other system weighs under 4.4 pounds, has a dual parachute system, and has 
a wireless licensed broadcast video transmitter. This is a completely unique product and we're very excited to bring it to you. What excites me most about the Mini is the potential to change newscasting forever. Cool. So this is uh, the thing you just saw. Uh, uh, if anybody has any questions, uh, I'm more than happy to, uh, to answer any questions anybody might have. Yes? What's the parachute for? What's the parachute for? You know, just for aesthetics. The parachute in case there's a failure. Um, pretty much what we're trying to do, what all the news, news networks want to do is they want to fly over people. Uh, for obvious reasons. I mean, uh, uh, the future of these things is people want to fly over riots, they want to fly over buildings on fire, murder investigations, things like that. Right now, uh, the regulations are, regulations right now are incredibly uh, uh, restrictive. You can't fly within 500, 500 feet of people or buildings that you don't have permission to fly over. Uh, for the real, real news gathering, that's, that's very limiting. Um, there is new, re new legislation that hopefully is coming out in June that's going to lessen that, and they're going to create a micro UAV category. This was designed to kind of fit that, to be 4.4 pounds with parachutes. Um, and parachutes, obviously, to slow, to slow a descending fall. I mean, uh, um, if it's hitting you while it's being slowed down with parachutes, um, the risk of skull fracture is way less. Yes? What's the level of transmission of the video from the ground to the receiver? Sorry, say that again? What? How far? So uh, it could go, I believe, three miles. Three miles. Now, different things to be concerned with when you're talking about transmission. It's not all about length. It's the, it's also about latency. Uh, like you could have two milliseconds latency, or you could have twenty milliseconds latency. Obviously, the more latency, uh, you know, sometimes, like for for in, uh, an instance, uh, broadcast sports, they can't cut from a camera of a golfer going then to a drone shot, and then the audience sees it again because of the latency in the signal. Uh, so there's many different factors. It's not all about like length. There's mo certain kinds of modulation. There's a certain kind of radio frequency transmitter that the, ra the, the waves bounce off of walls and stuff. That's the kind you want. Um, and that's the kind our system has. Yes? What kind of sound recording ability do you have on um, right now, we do have a, a, a very small microphone on it, and the thing is actually whisper quiet. It's incredibly quiet. Um, it's not really designed for that, though. Um, if you do, again, if you, and if you do want to go from camera A to camera B and the camera B being the drone, you do have the potential for sync issues. Uh, the thing is quieter than, than a phantom, if you've ever heard that. It's, it's, um, it's, light, it's uh, well, it's about as, about as heavy as that. Yes? Your company has a 333 three, three exemption, correct. But do you, uh, what do you see coming? You obviously have some insight into what's coming. Sure. It seems that a number of drone companies are, are frozen, waiting for those right. because of the, as you pointed out, the onerous current regulations like certification of yeah. the uh, drone pilot. The no night flying, the closed set. Right, um, right. So sure, you okay. Insights about what yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, Sherman wanted to just like an overview of the regulations right now and where it's going in the future. So, uh, my company was, I think, like the 10th in the country to get legal approval. That's a 333 exemption. It's the only way to commercially fly drones legally in, in, in America. Uh, and it's still incredibly restrictive. Uh, the amount of work and jobs I can't, like, you'll be surprised. Think, oh, okay, no, airports, JFK and LaGuardia, no, there's helipads, there's, there's 100 airports in New Jersey, who would have known? Um, you know, you, you can't fly at night, you can't operate from a moving vehicle, um, you can't fly drones over 55 pounds. All of the pilots that are flying drones today need to have a pilot's license. Pilot's license, it takes six months and $20,000. I am fairly confident the pilot's license thing is going to go away. There's going to be some sort of certification, a written test, an eye exam, something like that. Um, there is talk, again, about creating a micro UAV category where, where it's going to be maybe not even done by weight, but done by uh, joules, like the amount of energy like a, a heavier drone going slower upon a fall will create as much energy as a lighter drone going faster. 
Um, but it's the FA. It's really a, it's a black box. I mean, I've, I've met with the FA multiple times. I'm, I'm working with this system with a CNN and a, a program they call Pathfinder. And Pathfinder is essentially tasked with um, uh, drone operations over people in urban environments. So that's right in our wheelhouse. Um, but progress, if, if you could call it that, is incredibly slow. Uh, it's not, you know, and there's Pathfinder program. There was just a program that met called the ARC program that made some recommendations. But it's being criticized internally by, uh, I made recommendations for different categories of operating over people, essentially, is what they're trying to do. Uh, operating over people, obviously, for news gathering is, is very critical. Um, so I hope it, I hope it uh, loosens up a bit uh, shortly, but hard to say. Yes? One last question. Okay, sure. Do you sell the drone or do you sell the service? Sorry? Do you sell the actual No, we don't. Service? No, so I mean, uh, our business model is not to, manu ma I don't plan to mass manufacture these products. I mean, we, we build that system uh, in-house. We build heavy drones as well. We build medium-sized drones. Uh, the, the, the object is to kind of build superior products to what it's out there and have a service model where we're just essentially have a small fleet of them. Right now I think we have 12 drones um, and we're doing it across the country and essentially to use something like this to kind of leverage uh, our technology into larger service contracts with, uh, with network news organizations. Okay, Th right. thank, thank you, I appreciate it.